Hey, you're right, guys. Welcome to the uh, Burst Transmission Podcast. This is the first of its kind where me, the host, Serrated Viper, will be talking everything related to games, uh, you know, getting to know individuals and stuff like that. And I'd like to introduce you all to my first guest, a good friend of mine, King Oro. How you doing, man? What's up? Yeah, um, no, no, Oro now. Let's say best end of a year now, give or take. Yeah, yeah, it's been about a year. Yeah. Um, oh, would you like to uh, just let the uh, viewers, listeners know a bit, a bit about you? Yeah. Um, my name's King Oro, a.k.a. Chris. I think we have that in common, actually. We do. But, uh, <laughs> it's a common name. <laughs> it's a great name. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not really a master of any one thing, so I've, I really got into gaming um to to spend time with my brothers and to to spend time with you know, and meet new people um which is how i met you yeah. and uh, uh for me it's always been about uh about meeting everyone and and getting to play with new different people and get to experience different uh perspectives but uh but that's that's all gaming is for me so yeah. Yeah. um i like to think it's an, a unique perspective from the uh from the grinders sweats <laughs> I'm yeah. super chill, baby. <laughs> Too chill, some might argue. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've gamed with any of your brothers yet or anything like that, no? Um, if you game with uh, uh, Laughing Coyote, actually, I think he's just a coyote uh, with a K. Oh, I don't know. He's in the clan. He's in Orion. Ah. Um, he's my brother. Uh, my other brother does not play, but he does watch from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Just sub on the subject of Orion here, I think no, yeah. this makes for a pretty yeah. good segue. Do you want to let them know, you know what Orion's about? Because we're both on the same team. Yeah, um, so Orion is kind of just now delving into the content creation. Uh, it's always been a background of, of my personal content creation journey, but now we're starting to recruit. But how Orion started was um, just me and uh, McGuffey, you know McGuffey, um, we just kind of collaborated and decided that if we're going to game, um, we want to find a way to uh, make money doing it, but uh, specifically for the cause of helping other people. Yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, you can take out of your own pockets all day long, but eventually that comes to a cost to you. So, you know, my dad's always taught me that if you enjoy something, find a way to make money doing it. If you don't need the money doing it, give it to somebody else so um you, you try and help people as much as you can and that's really the premise of orion we wanted to foster new content creators we wanted to give back through charities we wanted to raise awareness on specific ideas and and uh, organizations that we you know held close so uh that's really what it's about and now now we're moving into true org uh real content creation teams and uh and kind of raising that initiative uh here through the end of the year and then hopefully for a big 2021 yeah no, no, we're fine <laughs> we've got plans and we're tight i sit down go yeah you know, we've got to get wrecked doing the branding for writing and things like that oh so, yeah uh, yeah really looking forward to that um yeah uh, yeah thanks for that lowdown um yeah yeah getting to the subject of games i guess um I don't know how much of Beyond Light we've played in comparison to one another. What do you think of the expansion so far? Essentially, what it's always been about for me, um, I started in Forsaken, like right before Forsaken dropped. Oh, you've not played and Destiny even, 1, have you, at all? No, I no. never played Destiny 1. I, I hadn't touched a video game in probably seven or eight years. And then I saw McGuffey playing uh, Destiny 2, um, and he was playing the war, the, I think it was Warmind. Um, so I kind of just started watching him and then started, I actually bought a PS4, uh, secondhand and bought Destiny, um, right before Forsaken dropped mm -hmm. and fell in love immediately. Yeah. Um, the game is kind of just one component, but as soon as you start to research, like, the game is complex enough to where you have you, you don't have to, but it's easier to go online, especially for somebody who hasn't gamed in such a long time. Um, so you catch yourself going online, you know, where's this triumph? Where's this 
you know, how do I farm this piece of uh, gear? How do I farm this weapon? And as soon as I dropped in to the online community, that was it. Yeah. I was, I was done. <laughs> um, I was, I was 100% in. Yeah. So, so for me, uh, Destiny as a whole has always been about making sure that there's enough content to keep it interesting and that it's content that not just you enjoy but everybody enjoys yeah um depending on you know it, regardless of whether you're a pve or a pvp or both um there's got to be enough there to to want to grind to the season so that's always the number one important thing for me i don't give a shit about weapons i don't give a shit about roles i don't give a shit about if the, what the event is as long as it's interesting and you can repeat it uh, so it's always about gaming with other people see but see my approach to this is sort of like different because like growing up i played like a lot of different you know rpgs and things like that so mm -hmm. character building and how especially when it kind of when destiny pulls out know, rpg elements to it all i always think about how does my character build how is it going to work or how do yeah. i li like to play so it's like going back to like Destiny 1 with the Ghost Edition. You got a book mm -hmm. with that, and it was called Arms and Armaments and things like that. And it had like exotics going through it all. And literally, okay. I'd seen the last word in it. I was like, what the fuck is this gun in here? It looks <laughs> beautiful. And then literally up until this point, now with Beyond Light, I've always built my character around the last word. And then yeah. this season, like the changes Bungie have made to the mod system, and they, they, they freed up so much more space now so you can get like creative so now i'm incorporating empowered by light builds war mind cell mods and it's just how to build your own guardian at this point gets more interesting yeah. and then that kind of feeds back into how your philosophy you know of how you'd like to play the game right. and things like that yeah yeah and that's that's the thing is it's got to be interesting for people who who go and dive into it that deeply and yeah. it's got to be interesting for people who don't you know who people just want to hop on and grind a little bit with their friends um so it's it's always been an enjoyment to learn i really enjoyed the lore more than anything yeah um, but, but yeah the lore and the music is like fucking top notch <laughs> but <laughs> but uh you know i always i always like to learn about it but it's not it's not ever my priority to build around a weapon i like to use it, you know all the different weapons i i go through phases where i like to snipe where i like to shotgun i yeah. like to use grenade launchers it's it's always kind of evolving for me oh yeah so um, i remember king Goro's in pre uh, not king, oh, king Goro, king allen and they taught you how to use like the double uh special, the double special yeah i come into it i'm like wait what are you doing <laughs> I, dude what a mistake <laughs> but i That's tried i did i tried it and i gave it you know I gave it 100% for yeah, as long did. as I could stand it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't begrudge anyone doing it either because I do, it takes a huge degree of risk and skill yeah. to pull it off. Like, you miss yeah. a sniper shot if you weren't using Revolka. You know what I mean? You'd pay for that dearly. Because <laughs> like, not everybody's well, going to be rocking secondaries in the Crucible. Doubly mm -hmm. fucked if you kill somebody and they're using kinetics and you're like, um... Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you basically have to stack sca when you could. When stack just stack scavengers, stack uh, the other mods, just like all the ammo mods you could. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all too, the ammo mods you could. Yeah, not too bad in like PVE content, is it? Like if you're raiding and whatnot, like sni yeah. snipers and all sorts until you go blue in the face. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So how do what do you think of Beyond Light? No, like exclusively so, as a DLC. Yeah, so specifically Beyond Light um, has really. Uh, up until beyond light forsaken was my favorite um, really okay now i played even though i started right before forsaken i played through all of it from d2 uh, vanilla so so what did you start at one mind work your way backwards up until the fight forsaken cut I, out? I didn't even touch forsaken i grinded for like three weeks before forsaken dropped okay through the entire campaign through Warmind, through like through all, I think there were three DLCs at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so I grinded through all three in like three weeks. Um, built some gear, you know, built some gear out, grinded for some weapons, uh, got to top level, uh, max level, and then Forsaken dropped like the next day. Yeah. <laughs> so so you... it was perfect. But Beyond Light has been 
<clears throat> Beyond Light has really been my favorite so far. Uh, the storyline is great. Um, the raid has been great so far. But uh, like I said, more than anything, it has huge potential for repeatable content. Um, yeah. We've been playing it for you know a few weeks now, and I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. I still have so much to do, and I love that. I love that feeling that you just, it's almost overwhelming, but you just know like you're gonna have a ton of shit to do for the whole season. You're, never, you're not gonna run out. Yeah, that's true. You know, even, even the guys who are putting, you know, 100 hours a week into the game uh, are still gonna have shit to do at the end of the season. Yeah. You know, so it's, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, and then obviously we've got Season the Hunt, although it's separate from the DLC in terms of content goals. Like, right. I, I think with so much focus on Beyond Light, Season of the Hunt is just, it's like anime filler at the moment. I don't get what it's meant yeah. to be or do at the moment. I had a conversation, or well, more of an exchange, not so much of a conversation over to it. I think it was with a guy called Jimbo. And I was saying that I, it's kind of sad that the hunts in this season are its own isolated activity. Because that would be fucking brilliant if you could perform a hunt and it happened in the open world and you're in a Yeah, with orbit. everybody. Yeah. Yes. I, I, Bungie have missed a trick with that. Because one of the best mm -hmm. things in Destiny 1, like the first Raid Vault of Glass, mm -hmm. there was a mechanic to even open up the door where everyone would be in a public space of Venus and there's three platforms you have to stand on to activate this pillar in the middle of it. And you'd right. get random low level people coming, helping, killing all of these menators and things like that. And I'm like, oh, Bungie, you could have recaptured that feeling. Yes. Oh, just, <clears throat> yeah, it would have been so good. Yeah. Um, I agree. As for Beyond now, Light, go, go on. Real quick, while I'm thinking about it, um, I've, uh, I really were, I was hoping that they would recreate, and this might be similar to Walter Glass, because uh, I, I haven't played Walter Glass. Yeah. I'm very excited to play Baltic Glass when they, you know, bring it out of the vault. But yeah. Um the the opening scene of um the opening scene of the fucking moon where everybody's just like whenever they first opened up the moon as a location and everybody is in that location together with the tanks and all of that oh, shit. Yeah, and the vanguard bots that? are all there and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, that was, really was cool. awesome. That was I want more of that because you had you know you were in your fire team even if you had three people in your fire team there were you know two three four other fire teams yeah. doing the mission together with you everybody was this moon, big right? push to open up the moon again. You know I, so, I, when I played that for the first time and I've been referencing this a lot tonight but it reminded me of you know the Halo two but not more namely three campaign. You know, when you like you're doing your level normally, and then you start getting the Marines all diving on your tanks, helping you shoot the shit and things like that. And yeah. I was getting some serious able nostal Halo nostalgia <laughs> going through that first yeah. mission, and then it just fizzles away and fucks yeah. off somewhere. My, right. Oh, it's the only part of the whole freaking yeah. DLC that was like that. Yeah, it was. It was oh, uh, it's such a shame that that was a good opening mission. It's like even yeah. when you go back to that D2's base, that like the Red War campaign, that first level, actually having Zavala. Although all we did was pop a shield, it was great to see an NPC outside of where they're stationed in the tower, just right. doing something. Just fucking staring yeah. at nothing. It's like, I was even blown away seeing Ares and the Drifter, like on, on Europa, like sat around the campfire, chilling out. I'm like, wow, fuck, these NPCs live, you know, they actually live and breathe in this world. Yeah. Although it's really small things they're doing, like giving you a bit of dialogue exposition here and there. But it's mm. nice to see him just being in, you know, more than just that one place. Or even Anna and the Stranger, you know, or yeah. when, when you do Europa for your weekly, or going to the Lament Quest or whatever it was. And these mm -hmm. two are actually having a conversation between themselves and you're, so th you know, you're there as an observer, watching these characters yeah. interact, it's like, Destiny's now a world. It's actually really becoming cool, a world. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Um, it's and, it's been uh, it's been really cool to kind of explore the rest of the Vanguard. You know, well, yeah. and not even just the Vanguard, but but the rest of the NPCs. Yeah. Um, besides the Vanguard, has been really cool. Yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to touch on as well. I think uh, you touched upon it. Yeah, the soundtrack to this DLC. Yeah. Holy fuck. Dude. <laughs> All right. For me personally, I haven't seen Bungie best Rise of Iron soundtrack up until yeah. Beyond Light. And I 
I, 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 I've been listening to a few of you know Destiny <laughs> songs going as far as the first game, and I'm thinking, why does Beyond Light sound so great? And then why mm -hmm. am I struggling so hard to you know, say outright, right, this is better than Rise of Iron? And I really do think it's because with this soundtrack, it's been built around a melody, and Rise of Iron did exactly that, where it's that, oh, yeah. oh, 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 for Rise of Iron, you can listen to that soundtrack, and you hear that melody used mm -hmm. in different ways and different soundtracks to convey different emotions. Yeah, and for sure. Beyond Light, you get the theme, and I'm going to use the first and last songs on the soundtrack. Like, you've got the Beyond Light theme, it's like very melodramatic, you know, darkness, mm -hmm. you know, low in tone. And then you get the song, I think it's called Look Within, and it plays during the final boss encounter in the new raid. Yeah. And it's very, you know, hyperbolic, you know, we're here, we're heroes, let's fucking kick some ass. But it yeah. uses the melody that was dark in tone. Same melody. Yeah, with the theme, but it, it injects it with the her heroism of the Guardians, you know, like finding the good part of themselves with the darkness. And yeah. Then you've got... Um, What's the song that everyone's uh, going on about now? Uh, deep, uh, oh, deep, fucking... deep, is it Deep Stone Lullaby? Yeah. Yeah. You're in the jumping puzzle in the raid. Yeah. 100% my favorite song. Now, I actually listened to the song because we got the, um, I got like the, whatever, the downloadable soundtrack, whatever, yeah. with my pre-purchase. my uh, pre -purchase. And I listened to it and I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> that was it. Like, uh, next. Yeah. Like, but I see a lot of right. context. Like, oh, the, like in in the frame of the whole soundtrack, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, but it was more of a transition in the soundtrack, and then when you do it in the raid, it's phenomenally placed. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, is a completely different experience with the music mm -hmm. when you're in the raid. Yeah. Completely different. Yeah, it's like that, that entire jumping section. I was like going through that, and like, there's a. I'm not particularly big on anime, but I'm a huge fan of Gundam t shirt. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, going through that and seeing the outside of it when you go through it, it reminded me a lot of Gundam and some of the music that's made in the anime by a guy called Hiroyoki Suano. I was like, this is absolutely a beautiful piece of music. And yeah. I don't know if this is me making up head cannon, but I'm sure with shit, there are musical notes in that song that um, I use uh, from a song in Forsaken called The Man Named Cade. I'm almost certain of it, but I, I, I need other people to uh, listen to that and actually see if they can hear it in themselves, or it's just me making it up in my head. But, so I'm wondering <laughs> if that's actually alluding to something later down the line. That would be a fun comparison, yeah. Mm. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, so w what have you done in Beyond Light? What haven't you done yet? What have you got left to do? So I have, I think the biggest thing I have left to do is um, all my fragments and like all of the little aspects and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how, uh, but I feel like it just kind of, like as soon as you got uh, the ability to use stasis, mm. it was just like, oh, quest, <laughs> whatever. <Yeah. laughs> like it was like, let's go free some assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Just start so calling I, uh, Mr. Freeze right. and <laughs> So, um, and then when I started getting hit with the fucking tracing uh, grenade, whatever it's called, where like shatters the whoever's in front you. of you. Yeah, and then tracks you. Yeah. I was like, no, this is bullshit. <laughs> and then I went back to doing the quests. Yeah. That's what put me back to it. But I, I feel like people um, weren't very clear on how to unlock the different aspects and the different fragments um and i don't know if it was just me that didn't look too far into it and was just like okay it wants me to do this shape before the end of the season um i don't know if i was the only one like that or if everybody just kind of widely missed within the first week or two that <laughs> the game that's how you unlock that <laughs> yeah so uh so i missed like the first two weeks or a week and a half of that um but yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing I've left to do. And then, oh, no, excuse me, not Aldrin. Yeah, Aldrin. Bro. No, Aldrin. I I have to level up Aldrin. <laughs> so, uh, I those are my two uh, my two initiatives here over the next couple of weeks is to level both of those up. I've got Varix almost leveled all the way up, but uh, 
but definitely uh, need to unlock all the all the subclass uh, stasis stuff, and then uh, spend some time with Aldrin for sure. I think we spent too much time with Aldrin to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well. <laughs> you should be dead. <laughs> you should be dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I've got... I literally... I bothered with Varix the first week of the DLC. Not touched him since. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, fine, I'm going to tell him, G. And then it stopped. Uh, it stopped at that. That's it. Uh, uh, yeah, I've done everything else. Um, as for the fragments part, I've got one more left to unlock. And you'd be happy okay. to know as well, if you unlock him for one character, it unlocks it for your entire account. Yeah. <laughs> so you Thank literally you. have access to your fragments on your other characters. Like the, oh, I'm not sure if it's God. fragments the call, but not the ones in the top right, you know, the ones in the bottom. Mm -hmm. The ones yeah, that yeah. Like, empower it's... your grenade and all that kind of stuff. That's a like yeah, wide, that's... but you still need to get yeah. the stuff in the top right of your subclass. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is... Oh, wow, that's really nice. helpful. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Because like, I, I could have done all six, like, last week, but then I have... I picked up, you know, the Vanguard version, and there's one of them is like you've got to kill like ten champions with status abilities. I did two, and I was like, I can't be bothered, so I scrapped it. I was like, I'll wait for next week, and then I'll just do the last one. And then nicked into a glad stream earlier tonight, and he quickly mentioned something about there being a quest that's gone live, and apparently if people do it with all six fragments unlocked, you don't get anything for it. But I've got no idea what that is. Interesting. So I don't know if it means if you've already got all six and you do the weekly again, you get nothing for it or there's something in the game. Or if you missed. don't have all six, maybe it unlocks all your fragments. Uh, I don't know. Um, that would be weird that it's tied to fragments. But... Yeah. I'm just waiting for the day when they, you know, they do it with the other subclasses. Like, you know, me and Gunslinger, I, I, it was so hard for me to come away from that throwing knife and I hated status. Oh, I know. Like, it's so hard. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've got a funny but feeling they're going to... Yeah, yeah. Oh, that Titan Melly. Oh. <laughs> but I'm Titan. Holy shit. Uh, no, I've not played with that Titan in the last couple of weeks. Oh, have you tried any of the other subclass other uh, classes yet? Um, I played on Hunter a little bit. Hmm. I did play on Hunter a little bit offline in the middle of a meeting. Oh. <laughs> It's like, so you got to multitask, man. You got to multi. Like, it's the only way. <laughs> I'm absolutely envious. You juggle four jobs, two of which you yeah. is it jo job three and four. You can juggle in the same place while gaming. Uh, jobs one. Well, now, um, now jobs one, two, and three are all here at the same place. How? <laughs> yeah. How, how have you managed that? And gaming. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing five jobs then? <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. It, I, it doesn't feel like a job. But we'll see. Wait, well, all of them um, don't feel like a job or just g gaming? <laughs> I would say probably two feel like jobs. You know, the other two were... Um, well, all right, so... Hmm. Did we go through them? Yeah, go on. <laughs> so my uh, day job, medical billing managing this medical billing company where i'm at now actually um wait with the gorilla on your fridge as well <laughs> yeah fucking gorillas are the best dude <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's a titan <laughs> so, <laughs> so um so i'm here now and uh my house is on the market so i moved my streaming setup here um luckily i'm the boss so it doesn't matter yeah. uh so that i would say feels like a job medical billing managing people you're responsible for people's livelihoods it makes you care about people yeah. it makes you empathetic it's also super fucking stressful so definitely feels like a job number two uh number two is selling cigars so <laughs> yeah i just get to smoke all day <laughs> When you is it is is That's that the it. job you're at now where the woman down the hall? Yeah, so right. like uh, the humidor and everything is all over there, the counter to check out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I've got my streaming set up in the back of the cigar area. Yeah. And my office this is now my office where I manage in the other suite in this building is the medical building company. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I just ran a phone line over here. <laughs> what What's the word in Destiny now? That strats that. <laughs> that strats right there. So, 
and then job number three is um is consulting you know management consulting uh it become the basically for that uh they take their pound of flesh every dollar you make they take their pound of flesh so that's always that's always felt like a job uh, so let's say jobs one and three feel like jobs yeah jobs two job two is smoking cigars and selling cigars yeah super easy really fun to do um and job number four literally these people hired me to find all of their problems and i love that shit so <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, if somebody just unleashes me on a company it's like yo we're bleeding money find it that's my shit man i love that i love it oh that that's like channel, channeling your inner pessimism uh, yeah, sorry, oh, yeah. inner peasant. i don't even know what the word is i'm looking for eh? <laughs> it's my capitalist side <laughs> it's a capitalism <laughs> the capitalism so i, I mean i just uh, it always comes down to one of two things either you're inefficient or somebody's taking it yeah which i love really efficient finding... at finding these problems yeah yeah <laughs> yeah very very and i've got i've had a lot of practice because of jobs one and three so it uh, works out wait so is that oh because jobs one and three people have been at you to find the flaws in what you do you're able to then kind of do that with job four right yeah uh, okay so we've kind of perfected a lot of stuff with job one um you know i've been doing that for 15 years yeah. the longest uh so with job one we really perfected a lot of our workflows and then that allows me to do job three which is at a much higher level than my small business yeah um and then so you get the small business aspect of things you get the high executive chain aspect of things and that allows me to find problems in businesses with job number four yeah, I mean, I zero just... to do with destiny and gaming <laughs> <laughs> it's but just what i'm we... always i'm always working so i'm always multitasking when i'm streaming i'm also working yeah because you do a lot of data handling and like yeah. it's like huge uploads that you're doing as well so it's yeah. like you're waiting for let's just say throw a number out there two terabytes worth of data that's like a good mm -hmm. couple of hours of gaming oh yeah yeah for sure easily yeah absolutely beautiful synergy you've got going on there to be honest with yeah you. I, I, I try to figure it out as best i can yeah I say <laughs> like right now i've time. been it's like... i've been here for what time is it it's seven o'clock local time okay uh, i've been here for 38 hours without sleep again <laughs> i've been in this chair <laughs> Does it not recline or anything like that? Kind of like nap on it. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> all the fine action. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, man. So I, I actually have a couch over there too. If I, if I gotta take a rest, you yeah. know. But um, who's got time for that? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't we juggling for? It's a time. the the first three days of the month are always my busiest. Day. Yeah. I, I, I've said it to you a few times now. Like, I'm incredibly envious at your work ethic. I, I don't. I struggle with just a full time job trying to fit in streaming and everything else. You, you're just like ha, noob. <laughs> Honestly, it's uh, it might be an addiction. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I don't know. It's I've never had an issue with it as far as putting the time. In. Yeah. My wife has had an issue with it. Oh, My I kids most certainly have an issue with it. Uh, but um, I'm as long as I'm making time for them and I'm taking care of my health, um, then stretches like this every once in a while don't really impact me too much. Um, and everybody understands because everybody likes nice shiny things. Hmm. <laughs> we do. <laughs> that shit doesn't fall off trees, man. I know what so. people expect it to. <laughs> yeah, and really, really, it's come so like every time I get a new job. Yeah. Or I make a new job because I've made a couple of jobs. I just bug out of thin air. You know, I find something I enjoy doing, so I'm gonna find a way to make money doing it. And um, it's never, it's always about can I do it? You know, it's it's never been about uh, how much money can I make? You know, how how full can I get my bank account? Um, it's always I just want to be like, it's the challenge. It's can I? Can I make money doing that? Hmm. Nobody else has ever made money doing that. Can I do it? And the challenge of it has always been what's driven me. Yeah. Um, 
And then on top of that, I think probably the most important thing that's that's really a, a really a driving factor in in work ethic, not just for me, but I feel like for anybody, is as soon as you care about somebody more than you care about yourself, yeah, you'll do whatever it takes. So that, you know, as soon as I got married, I got a job, a second job. And I had a job to take care of myself. I got married, I got a second job. I had a kid, I got a third job. I had two more kids, I got a fourth job. You know, so as soon as you are okay putting yourself out um, on the line and you're okay putting yourself out of time and out of sleep uh, in order to save somebody else's time, to, in order to give somebody else more rest, um, to provide things that you don't really care to provide yourself with, uh, it even stretches to the streaming community. Um, I'm, I, as long as I can help it, I'll never stop streaming. I don't care if I make a fucking dollar. Yeah. But if I've got to get another job, which I did, in order to interact with the streamers and support the streamers that I enjoy supporting and interacting with, then that's what I do. Yeah. Um, you know, COVID hit and it was a really difficult time for everybody. And you know, it doesn't, it kind of sounds like a pat on the back and I, I hate that, but um, it w I didn't have that difficult time. You know, one of my jobs had a difficult time, but I had two other jobs and then I got a fourth job. Um, so I didn't feel the impact the way other people did. Yeah. Uh, and I found myself in an economy, I don't know how it was there, but here everything got cheaper. Gas got cheaper travel anything travel related got cheaper anything work related hotel related hmm. ev everything got cheaper if food if it wasn't from a grocery store grocery stores stayed the same or got more expensive but restaurants got cheaper anything that involved commingling with other people totally tanked uh, well, um, for the uk they did something called is it eat is it eat in to help out or something like that and that mm -hmm. caused more problems with COVID than it did help. More people started yeah. passing it around. So it, hence lockdown too. Yeah. So everybody, um, everybody, not everybody, but hmm. like a lot of the people I interact with, um, uh, my wife is a teacher. Yeah. So uh, she was still required to work. That's an essential position. Um, you know, my in-laws and my parents both were essential. Uh, so they didn't, you know, get out of work. Um, my brothers and sisters, a little bit different story. You know, they they required some, you know, some downtime, some assistance. They got help from the government. That's, you know, what it is. But um, I found myself needing to support other people. And I found myself with a surplus because I didn't feel the impact yeah. the way other people did. So I just started fucking get like, I felt like Bill Polt. Like... <laughs> Just fucking giving money away on Twitter because I felt fucking guilty in the middle of this pandemic for having any. You felt it guilty. Was the, I felt guilty. It was the weirdest fucking thing, dude. I, I've never felt like that. Wow. Uh, with some, I just, just, there's so much strife around you. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what else to do, you know? So. Yeah. Weird, uh, weird rant. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Like you know, like even well, this was right before mm. I feel we started this podcast. I was just saying, look, there's no script. You know, it just goes completely off the chain. Yeah. You know, that's how I want it to be. Cause as far as I'm concerned, you know, viewers, listeners, I think from the pair of us, like we get more out of yeah. each other. Ed, and again, learning some things here about you we haven't really spoke about as of yet. Yeah, so, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, quite say what you need to say. It's not a rant, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. So I mean, that was that was really it. So I just I just kind of turned it around to, yeah. um, you know, I I hadn't been able to drop bombs on people for a long time, and that was kind of how I got my start in the community. Yeah. So I started doing that shit again, and I'm um, just kind of trying to give back as best I could. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's like... a weird time, man. Yeah, even when I like started out, because I literally, I think it was like, no, my one year anniversary like, last week being an affiliate. 
and like literally even when we got talking like you, you were saying oh yeah i've seen you in these streams and i'm like yeah I've seen your name in streams a lot as well, usually at the top of someone's donut list. <laughs> uh, dude, I love that number one spot. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's just, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, what uh, outside of Destiny, have you got any games you want to pick up like further down the line or anything like that? Or yeah. <clears throat> so I, uh, I, I've been having to stare at this fucking statue for like two weeks now oh valhalla and all i want to do is play fucking valhalla wait so what's that but... up on top of your fridge then is that not valhalla there either or is that just the box for that statue uh that's the box for yeah that's a box for the statue ah. and then a bunch of dragon ball z shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, so I, I really want to get into Assassin's Creed, the, uh, the new Valhalla. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just out of pure coincidence and hard work on their part, uh, Bungie decided to come out with a DLC that had a shitload of content. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> One that's actually strange. I, I, I don't know if it's for the better or worse, but you know, because everything there is like repeatable, fallible, and things like that. I don't know how much, you know, leg. You know legs that has i come back to destiny one and i'm sure you're aware of at least what the galahorn galahorn rocket launcher was yeah, yeah. Uh, and the prestige behind it i think that gun is that prestigious because of the rng element you no know, that destiny has it's shit but then the whole i need to get galahorn like this bungie haven't captured that since yeah but then there's yeah. the issue of, oh, the community will gatekeep. You can't do this way unless you've got this weapon. And it's it's sad. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I think one of my favorite things about when I first got into uh, video gaming again and Destiny again, yeah. and uh, when I first started exploring content related to Destiny, my number one favorite thing to watch for like weeks when I first started was Gallahorn reaction videos. Yeah. Holy shit, just, yeah. <laughs> just back to back Gallahorn reaction videos. Yeah. As soon as that shit dropped the hype, um <clears throat> that was really cool to watch. I, I I wish they would, you know, find a way to recreate that for sure. Yeah, I do I, I understand why it why they've gone down the route that they have where can't where loot's concerned because outside of Gallahorn, RNG is a shit it's a shit thing to deal with. I think yeah. as Destiny's gone on up to the beyond, like where they're making stuff more focused, you know, so you can, like, I could do this, this activity for, like, say, exotic arms. Like, I, I do like that approach, but then when is a good roll good enough? So when it stops, because for some people that right. could be months away, but for others, like, look <laughs> at the rate, let's say, I know, guy, like, this is using a huge content creator, but. Look at Gladlock, how quickly is he going to be able to get, you know, the roles he needs with, say, Wormhust Crown, Orpheus Rig, or whatever it is he does. I mean, it, so again, I don't know, because that's as much... I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah. Um. I mean, really, what it comes down to for me is just the chase, you know? Yeah. So uh, it, it can't be a time-related thing. Um, and I think that's where they, where the downfall is. Um, <clears throat> it's got to be such a pure RNG that, uh, you know, it's it's almost an equal drop rate for the people who are, you know, obviously if you don't play the game, you shouldn't get it first first try. But yeah, they've got to find a way to balance that algorithm, to where if you play a hundred hours a week or if you play 10, 15 hours mm -hmm. a week, um, you still kind of have similar not the same but similar opportunity um and that because that's where all the gatekeeping conversation comes and that's where all the you know the conversation about all oh, you only reward streamers and content creators that, yeah that's not people who that's true though is it sweats yeah. and like yeah like obviously they're gonna have it because they put the time yeah in. um there has to be things in the game where if you put the time and preparation in um you get the reward yeah but there can also be other things where it's just about getting lucky. Yeah. You know? It's like, even they have if they to were, have, they have to have both. Yeah. It's like, even if they were, like, the way they're going down with this target loot is great. 
And then there's the element of stacks on top. So it's like, right, yeah, bam. Let's say I've got these young Ahamkara's spine. Are they the right, uh, what, the right stats I need? No. So let's say there's like 10 exotic arms or a hunter give or take. Made up number, but right. there is a lot of them. And it's like, all right, how long does that last? It's just, I uh, you could get, I say you could get them, like I could get what I wanted tomorrow, or I could be waiting months down the line, the season ends, right. I haven't gotten all that I want. It's like, I, I, I don't know what to make of it. Cause like Monster Hunter does the targeted loot system thing well. Like if I break a, so let's say a Raffalos, a Raffalos's head, I have a chance mm -hmm. at gain, getting a Raffalos plate. And it's it's at a drop rate, but at least it's just that I am. But with exotics, it's like you've got to worry about the stat roll as well. Right. And yeah, there's so much complexity. Yeah, that's where I'm a bit uh, with it. But like I say, the route Bungie have gone down, like where loot, it, it's brilliant. Like Menagerie. Um, what was it? What was it called with uh, Curse of Cyrus? When you had that um, thing the on Sundial. Yeah, the Sundial. Yeah, that was another great system. I absolutely yeah. love that. And then obviously now we've got right. You can, you can do this lost sector. You could do this activity to get this right. like, specific item. Um, yeah. Um, games wise, anything outside of Assassin's Creed Valhalla at all? Um, um, I definitely want to hit Cyberpunk for sure. Mm. I've already got it pre-ordered. It's got to be. It's got to be ready to download. Just I hope. I hope it doesn't get delayed again. Yeah. It's like oh. I think I've seen a part of a tweet out saying, "Oh, we're in single digits now, folks." And in my head, I just wanted yeah. to go, "Yeah, we could delay this tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, how how close was it when they did the first delay? I mean, it was, I feel like it was pretty I, close. It I was wonder, like a week before. Yeah, it was so a week, two weeks, maybe. Like literally, yeah. at the point of contention was they announced the game had gone gold. As far as the industry or like, fans. Well, people know uh, in the industry, going gold typically means, right, the game's hard pressed, it's ready to ship, it can go out, people can play it. They either need a day one patch or they don't, you can still play it. But then they've delayed it, even though it's gone gold, and tried to turn around and saying, yeah, going gold doesn't necessarily mean the game's ready. And it's like, you can't really start changing what going gold now means because it's inconvenient yeah. to you. It's a bit of a shitty move, that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's well, I'm still excited. <laughs> oh yeah, like before, like when Cyberpunk was announced, and God knows how many years ago, I I didn't really kind of care for it. But one of my closest mates, like he's massive into the Cyberpunk genre, you know, even from like you know the films that are out there and right. things like that. And like because I've heard him talk about it so much, I then decided to give it a look. Let's say a month, two months ago, and I'm still like, eh. and then I started listening to the music. <laughs> And it's all the music, baby. Yeah, like and games in general. If the music's good, I'm like, all right, I'll give this a listen yeah. to. And then I started to kind of like dabble in a little bit of like Cyberpunk 2077's lore. And I have never heard, at least on paper, music in a video game intertwining with its story so intimately the way Cyberpunk seems to. Like yeah. with the band Samurai, the character Keanu Reeves plays, uh, Johnny Silverhand and how that all works into the lore, even as far as the tabletop board games go and all that, it's fucking yeah. nuts. And that's just one tiny bit of it. So I'm like, right, yeah, no, I'm fucking in. So then I bought yeah, off the Samurai. Samurai's like a band in the game. And I've bought and downloaded like their music available. It's on iTunes at the moment. And there's two songs like chipping in. And then my favorite one, Never Fade Away. Absolutely incredible piece to the music. And then there's the synth ways to it all. And then obviously through, I know you listen to some of that electronic um, music, some uh, like dubstep, yeah. that kind of thing. And like, I've started to lend an ear, bit, an ear to it because of you, lad. Um, yeah. I love four bands like, oh, what are they called now? Um, they sing Robot Rock and uh, Get Lucky. Daft Punk, yeah. Dramatic Twins. Like, and, there are bands that and then I go back to like the Wipeout Racing games because that's the kind of like EDM music they are having them as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, actually, I'm I'm really looking forward to the music that's got to you know, that's to offer in Cyberpunk. I can't wait for it. And then apart from mm. that, I don't know if there's anything else. Well, there is, but there's no confirmed release date. Final Fantasy 16, whenever we're grateful for uh -huh. that, which will be 10 years down the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2030. Yeah, you know, I'll probably be dead by the time we get it. Like, how long did it take? Like, 11 years somewhere like, before it come out. Like, oh absolutely, it's a hell of a wait. And then there's Final Fantasy VII Part Two remake. God forbid. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, yeah, much past. I don't know what else. I'm, there's Kenya. I'd like to get on the PS5 eventually, or, or Kenya. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Uh, my PS turned into a fucking DVD player, like, real okay. quick. Oh, that's right. Um, so, console, as soon as I got on PC, consoles were dead to me. Uh, the only thing that's really appealing is, you know, the exclusives. Um, Got a so right right now, there's not really anything exclusive to PlayStation or Xbox that's really no. um, got me so much to where I gotta go get the console. But we'll see. Yeah, because normally I'm like PS5, you know, a fucking console guy at heart. Really, I'm. I've only just recently made the jump to PC, but PS5 and Xbox, it's like that using the current. Well, not last year. I feel so weird saying it's the last gen games to sell the current generation hardware. And it's like, you're not, you can't sell me all the games on new tech and try and pretend that we're getting something out of it when no one is. It's, yeah. But then there are games like, say, God of War Ragnarok, which I know a whole bunch of people are looking forward to. Um, right. Ken of Spirit, the Spirits of Within or whatever it's called. That, that looks sort of interesting. Ratchet and Clank, Final Fantasy 16. But these are games we're not at least seeing until next year, if not beyond that. Yeah, for and sure. And then you've got Gamer Pass, which is probably the hand on heart i feel like it's a bit it isn't as all that as people say it is and then there's playstation now for sony and yeah um yeah i don't know if there's anything. yeah i mean i i had a uh i haven't i had one x uh, yeah um and i don't even remember which fucking one it was but i only <laughs> had one and never again <laughs> <laughs> you could get like a tin of alphabet soup open it up <laughs> pour it into a bowl and you see the shape of every single xbox you have the, there's ever been yeah. <laughs> or i'm sure if you go somewhere in egypt you could find a pyramid somewhere in cairo look at a wall see phil spencer's mug as a pharaoh and then see every single xbox oh there my in hieroglyphics <laughs> and you can't make out which one it is <laughs> yep oh my gosh dude <laughs> Yeah, just I I played PlayStation. I I went PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, Xbox. Hmm. Mistake, PlayStation Three. Quit gaming. Quit <laughs> forever. Gaming. I stopped gaming. I got married. I started having kids, and and that that was really when it was it was hard for me to balance. Before I really learned how to balance and truly uh, kill two birds with one stone. Hmm. or three birds for that matter <laughs> um so i had totally dropped gaming it was it was a, a pastime i couldn't afford you know so do you spend time i i imagine this is a straight up yes anyway even i'm asking this but i'm going to anyway do you game with your kids i do yeah, yeah. um my my five-year-old daughter is not a joke significantly better at sonic mania than <laughs> I've been Sonic significantly well. better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what the hell? That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, the other two are a little too young for it. They're yeah. uh, they're two and three. So. Just keep them packed, man. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Pac-Man. Yeah, we can do Pac-Man. Yeah, we can do Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Right for such a classic game. Like someone puts Pac-Man in front of me, my eyes like off, and I get really, really fucking competitive with that game. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a, but it's fucking bad. And you know what? I'm not all that on it, but I I think I'm hot shit on that game every time it's put in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and I it, that reminds me is that I just I feel like people have for not not forgotten I guess, but it would be interesting to see. We'll say it that way. It'll be interesting to see uh, if we take some of these big time competitive gamers and throw them on a pinball machine. <laughs> You know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Could you imagine throwing like Vlad and Sweat and Clyde like oh. put them on a pinball machine oh. and say biggest score gets you know gets the prize whatever? It's what you do, right? You get them on a PC loaded with either I think it's Windows 2000 or Millennium, yeah, Millennium <laughs> right? And you, you know, yeah. you know the space pinball game, right? Get yeah. them on a PC yeah, yeah. with that and have them all get them oh, in a room, God. Guardian yeah. Con, right? Well, yep. whatever. I can't remember what the new name of it's called now. Um, GCA. 
Yeah, because gamer convention. Gamer convention. Yeah, that's it. just have them all on that and see if they sweat it out and let them like get hyper competitive. Well, <laughs> funny as fuck. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, it would absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. On the PC side of things or anything like that, are you looking at any future upgrades or anything like that with the new like GPU lineup, for instance? Yeah, I definitely want to upgrade the GPU. Um, I'm kind of torn between. Uh, upgrading just the gpu or just transitioning my current pc to a streaming pc and then going with a, a two pc setup yeah uh, and just building a new pc with a 3080 i want i want the 3080 yeah and just in case no one anyone knows bit of a plug here on your behalf for oh he's a um, yeah. he's sponsored by artesian builds uses this yeah. code which is king oro <laughs> there we go k-i-n-g-o-r-o <laughs> Yeah, I've seen some of their builds. I, oh my, because it's not just all oh, right. Oh, yeah. You go, here's a you know like a course of yeah box, and here's all these high end parts in it. It's like no, they actually take the effort out to design you a proper unique PC. Yeah, like, so I'm like, yeah. there's one that's seen like folding out like tempered glass panels and all sorts of bad shit. So I'm like, yeah, oh wow, they're mad scientists, dude. Yeah, they're mad scientists. Yeah, and the etch into your PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never seen that like, done like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, the glad the uh, etched glass paneling and, yeah. and that kind of stuff and hand painted paneling. Yeah. Nuts. Dude. Yeah, absolutely nuts. <laughs> nuts. I'm thinking of Band of Brothers now. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. Yeah. Holy shit, man! We've been at this now for you know, just over fifty minutes. Because <laughs> well, we're man. awesome. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Um, have you got a, a, anything else you'd like to say before I close this up? Or because I think coming up to an hour now, I was like, you know, I think that was a pretty decent length for a podcast. Yeah, for episode, yeah, for anyway. sure, man. Yeah. For sure, I I wish you the best uh, doing this. It's it sounds like a fun, fun little project for sure. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. This is like I say, this is well out of my comfort zone. Um, <laughs> but it's like every time someone asks me to say, like, even with college. Like, I'd be the go-to guy. Chris, can you go give a presentation if it comes to like, group things and stuff like that? And everyone always turns turn on the goals. Again, I'm not patting myself on the back, to borrow your metaphor. But it's always something that people have kind of gone, no, you're actually not too bad at it. And like yeah. I said, on Saturday, I was nervous. And already I feel really comfortable. But again, I think it's because I'm just talking to you. you so, yeah, yeah <laughs> maybe. I, mean, I don't mean that to tell anyone short. I mean, because I'm comfortable. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I appreciate you agreeing to do this uh, for me, man. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, for the next one, obviously, because you said you're getting cyberpunk and whatnot. That's what mm -hmm. if, uh, Have you got an idea of what path do you want to take for your character, our curiosity? All right. So I am going in completely 100% blind. Yeah, no, no. So, Mike, it's just there's three tre so, trees you can pick from. And yeah, I haven't looked at any of them. Right. I don't even know what it is. You have to let me know why, even on the day of launch, because I already know which one I'm going to pick. And I'd yeah. like to kind of, let's say for the next podcast, if we can get a third person and it picks one of the other different trees, that would be we dope. can start bouncing the conversation, you know, how our different experiences were and how it all went and that kind of thing. So if we yeah. can say me, you, I, I, this might be me like grasping here, but if I'll say ask Glad, depending if you got oh, the boy. third one, get him on in, like, have a conversation that's not destiny uh, you know orientated you know something yeah. might be a bit different if that interests you yeah for sure yeah brilliant i mean i guess we would have to figure out because you know which one you're taking yeah. we would have to figure out which one he's taking hopefully it's not the same one yeah and then i would just take the third one well no because i don't like if you're going in blind i don't want to kind of take choice yeah. away from you even then I, that, that's not like a I think I'll just shoot myself in the foot by saying, oh yeah, let's make sure we get different ones. It, it'd be nice to, but even let's if you... just find three people that have yeah. three different... And yeah, so I imagine with the amount of, like, I guess, choice and stuff, the experience is still going to be different. Yeah. But, yeah. Um... Let's see. I might go a little uh, go a little dark with the character, you know? I don't, I don't know what the choices are, but... Um, it's funny because I always tend to go a little bit darker on my choices. I'm such a fucking nice, chill guy, like, <laughs> normally. And then it's like, it's, as soon as you give me a choice, should I kill this person? Uh, yes, 100%. Right, here's the thing, right? <laughs> if there's a choice of you know, doing the good or the bad thing, I always yeah. do the bad thing. Like, always I was playing the Infamous thing. Second Son, and obviously they've got the whole, you know, Mass Effect, you got Paragon Renegade. 
I went full blown renegade, and at the end of the get playthrough, and from a second son, I nuked a village full of children in it. Literally, just died and just fucking oh blasted God. the shit out of it. So I went full blown the extreme of bad, going full blown renegade in it. My, my yeah. mate sat there watching me. Goes, Chris, you are a piece of shit. And I just turned around and went, because yeah, I, I just fucking just liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's an orphanage as well and this thing and the start of the premises you know you're doing your thing for you know this village and you're trying to help them and because i was yeah. that much of an ass on my play from i was like no because it's just i don't want to sit there and do you know the good thing now you could argue you yeah. how morally fucked up i am it's like no i practice you know good ethics as much as i can do it's a game yeah. let me have the existentialism and let me enjoy myself yeah I you i mean you you really want to throw yourself into a role that you're not already you know yeah. really akin to yeah i think it's uh, that's part of the, the biggest you know fun of gaming is the role playing can be someone you're not you yeah know? absolutely that's when it's not a silent protagonist and you've got game creators going yep yeah, yes what you're this yeah. character Fuck you for Kojima for MGS5. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to end it there because we'll come up to literally the hour mark now. I thank you so much, man, for like, I'm doing this shit with my hands now. <laughs> thank, you, f thank you for agreeing to this and hopefully we can get you back for the next one, third person. I'm going to have even like more um, bigger discussion about, you know, cyberpunk and whatnot. Um, yeah. Where can people it. find you across social media and whatnot? Uh, Twitch.tv slash King Oro, and then on any uh, social media, Twitter and Instagram mostly, uh, X King Oro. Yeah, man. That, yeah, um, his uh, Twitter uh, handle is just below his webcam as well. As is mine, where you can find me at Serrated Viper, and for Twitch, it's TT dot TV, whatever the fuck that is. Serrated underscore Viper on Twitch. Uh, thank you all for watching. I, I appreciate it. Um, and hopefully see you for the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, that whole jargon, or even dislike. I don't mind a dislike. And leave your toxic comments down below. I'd appreciate it. Until then, guys, catch you in a bit.